Welcome to Nuclear Chemistry Part 3. In this video, we're going to look at radioactivity and um, half-lives, how long it takes things to decay. Let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing we want to do is make sure everyone understands the, the definition of half-life, right? So it's the time for um, the sample to decay to one half its original mass. And very often with um, radioactive substances, there might not even be enough to measure, right? But the so the radioactivity will drop. OK, so with radioactive substances, the, the, the measurable radioactivity and the mass are proportional to each other. The more mass, the more radioactivity, the less mass, the less radioactivity. Now, you know, I apologize, the quality of this slide's not the best, but I think it will communicate the idea, right? So here we have a bar graph, and we'll just go in and, and make sure that this is more clear for everyone. I'll draw these in, okay? So along our x-axis, we have time, in this case, in days. And then along the y-axis, we have the mass, or the radioactivity. And right now we know that this is iodine-131. All right, so we look here, and at the beginning of the, working with this sample, here is the original mass. So we started with 80 milligrams of iodine-131. And now if we look, what's half of 80? Here's 40. So see, this is the first half-life, right? So eight days later. Okay, so it's a little, right? So that's saying the first half-life. So in the first eight days, it drops by half, right? So eight days later, right, we've done one half-life. We have half as much radioactivity, half as much sample. Now, if we wait another eight days, right, then that would be our second half-life. And now we see, right, so half of 40 is 20. So this would be um, 16 days later, right, 8 and 8. Because that'll be two half-lives. And then, last but not least, here we go, right? So now if we wait an, a third half-life, Right? If we wait another eight days, 20 becomes 10. All right? So after 24 days, we would only have 10 milligrams of the iodine-131. So the important thing, so this is an inverse relationship, right? So the mass or the radioactivity All right, decreases, right? We have less and less sample, but notice that the time is getting bigger, right? As time increases, right? So the longer we wait, the less sample we have. So it's really important to um, get that inverse relationship. All right, so let's practice working with that a little bit. All right, so we'll go to our next page. Now, it's important to understand that we don't memorize half-lives, right? So we're always going to look half, we look these up in a table. Okay, I never expect you to memorize half-lives. It's something we would look up. And so let's with this first one, right? We have a, a sample of chromium 51, all right? So the first thing we want to do is we, we were working with a radionuclide we would want to find the half-life. So it's right here. Okay, we started with a 100 gram sample. So let's make sure everybody understands half-life. How long will it take for half the sample to decay? Go ahead and write your answer down. It's a really simple one, right? It's gonna take 27.8 days. Because that's what a half-life means. All right, now, we started with 100 grams. How many grams are going to remain 
after 83.4 days. So the question we're asking ourselves here is how many half-lives, right? If we look back at that previous graph. Now, I want to reassure you, I will only give you questions with whole numbers of half-lives. So a simple way to do this is we look at the time, right? So the time that we're going to observe the sample, 83.4 days, and we're going to divide that by the half-life. And that will tell us how many half-lives, the number of half-lives. Okay, so how many half-lives? So if we look here, right, there's our 83.4 days. All right, and then there are 27.8 days in a half-life. So we can put that per half-life. Okay, and that would tell us we have three half-lives. All right, so we take the time we're going to observe the sample, how many half-lives can fit into it. This will always be a whole number, right? So we started with 100 grams, right? So after the first half-life, right, we're only going to have half. 50 grams. After the second half-life, we'll have 25 grams. And after the third half-life, we will have 12.5 grams. So after 83.4 days, we will have 12 and a half grams of chromium-51 left. So notice, right, that we the amount of sample went down as the time got longer because more of the sample decayed. Now let's do one more practice on this page before we move on. This time we're going to look at carbon-14 and carbon-14 can be used to date fossils. So now we would want to look up the half-life for carbon-14 and here it is. We want to know how old is a fossil so that would be how many years old is a fossil. And this is a different approach to the question if we only have 6.25% of the original carbon-14. And so, oops, excuse me. So this is where math is, in, you know, woven into our course. This isn't super hard math, but it might be math you haven't done for a while, right? So we originally had 100%. And after the first half-life, we would have 50%. And then after the second half-life, we would have 25. So this is kind of similar to the, the last question. Okay. So after three half-lives, but so notice now if we want to get to six and a quarter percent, it's going to take four half-lives. All right. And each half-life, right, if we look up above, right, each half-life is, right, 5,730 years, all right? So we could even set this up like unit analysis, right? So um, using our understanding of the process of radioactive decay, we realize that it takes four half-lives for a sample to drop to six and a quarter percent of its original. So we would need four half-lives. And we know that each half-life is 5,730 years for carbon-14, all right? So now the half-lives are gonna cancel and we're left with years, which is perfect because we're trying to figure out how old the fossil is. And so when we do the calculation, we're going to get 22,920 years. So our, that's how old our fossil is. And um, I'm not going to grade you on sig figs for this, so don't worry about that. Okay, 
Now it looks like we have one more practice page on this. Um, students tend to tr struggle a little bit with this inverse relationship of half-lives, so I want to make sure that you have lots of, of guided practice to build your confidence. Um, so this is a, a, a different way. So before I asked you a question using about half-lives using a table, here is a graph, right? So the y-axis, sample remaining, time in years. What is the half-life of this radionuclide? Nuclide. All right, so we started at 100, so we're going to want to go to 50%, and we read that there. We come down. Mm. Yeah, it looks like it's, I don't know, right? Like three, three to four years. Okay, but we're going to want to use this, um, right? So, yeah, it's hard. You need a ruler, right? So we're just going to say four years, all right? So the half-life's right there. Voila. Okay, so let's say we have 100 grams of this sample above. How long do we need to wait for the radioactivity to decrease to one eight? of the original value. So on the other one, I use percentages. So now I wanted to make sure that you had an example where we're using fractions, right? So we start with our original sample, okay? And then after the first half-life, we would have one half of the original. Whoops, excuse me, let me slide that, right? And then after the second half-life, we would have a quarter. And after the third lap life, we would have an eighth. All right. So we can see that it's going to take three half lives for the sample to decay from its original amount to one eighth, right, of original. And notice we don't even know how much is really there. Oh, well, we have the 100 grams. All right. Okay. So. Now, once again, we start with, we figured out how many half-lives. We see that's an important question. So we have three half-lives. And from our chart up here, we said that each half-life is four years, right? Only one sig fig. All right, so it would take, right? So now the half-lives are gonna cancel. So it would take 12 years for this sample to decay from its original amount to one eighth of its original amount. Alrighty, so that um, wraps up our, our look at half-lives and we approached the questions from a couple, couple different angles to help you feel confident with no matter how the homework or the quiz or the exam question looks, you'll know how to solve it.